I briefly touched upon the software that comes with the Fire Studio project. The Camel Crusher was one of those VSTs. It's a freeware plugin that you can actually download online if you don't even have the Fire Studio project. So for people at home watching, this is actually a really easy way to uh, beef up your setup. The Camel Crusher is a VST plugin, and we're going to look at how to use it in Ableton using the PreSonus Fire Studio project inputs. So let's go over to Ableton and take a look. Here we are in Ableton Live, and I'm looking at the Camel Crusher plugin that comes with Fire Studio Project. Uh, right here I have a drum track. I brought this in from the presets. If you look over in the browser over here, um, you'll see that Ableton comes with actually a uh, whole slew of presets. In this case, I have a bunch of my own projects lined up. But I've brought in uh, this sample. I'm going to close the in-out panel. See my loop is right here. All right, so we have this basic loop, and if you look here, you'll see the drum setup. Here are the, uh, here's the drum sampler impulse. You'll see my kick, snare, other kick, synth, hi-hat, and crash. But what I want to do is check out Camel Crusher and see what it'll do to my drums in this situation. So here I have Camel Crusher. I'm going to drag it with the impulse right here. All right, so you'll notice here that the Camel Crusher has uh, main patches, Annihilate, American Crunch, American High Gain, British Clean, British Crunch, British High Gain, Bass Maker, Clean Rainbow, Tube Warmth. So you'll notice there are a lot of amp presets on here. You can also hit Randomize. And it'll totally randomize all your controls. Now I'm going to first look at each control individually to see what it does. You're going to want your master on at all times. Now what I did here, if you'll notice, the mix goes between the two different distortions that are inside of uh, Camel Crusher. For the purposes of learning here, I'm going to put it in between both levels and turn my distortion on, which it is right now. So I'm going to raise the tube distortion first. Now I'm going to listen to uh, the mechanical distortion. Now both together. This filter is a pretty standard filter. I'm going to turn it on and play the track again. Raise my resonance. OK, let's combine the filter and distortion. First, I'm going to turn the filter and distortion off, and then go down to the compressor and turn it on. First with it off. Now they have on right now what's called fat mode. Let's turn that off for a second. Now with it on. Now 
Now let's see what happens with the combination of that and the filter. Now let's add distortion and see how high we can go with the Camel Crusher. Now let's look at how to automate this in the timeline. Now I'm going to go into Arrangement View and open Metalhead. I'm going to select the Camel Crusher, and first I'm going to select the Filter Cutoff. Going to set keyframes, and I'm going to bring this up and then down. And then with the resonance, I'm going to have the Filter resonance rise as the filter cutoff goes down again. And then we're also going to take the um, mechanical distortion and we're just going to screw around with it a little bit, add some points. You can actually use the pen tool as well to uh, draw these out. If you look, I'm just going to do, this is one thing you might run into in Ableton a lot. I'm going to hold down control and click on my uh, sequence here. And you'll notice it says fix grid. In this case, we're going to want the smallest possible measurement we can get. Or we can turn it off. Because we might be doing very, very organic movements, I want this off. And I'm going to draw just pretty much anything that comes to mind that might be cool for distortion. And then play that back. So stop it. So there you have it. That is the Camel Crusher plugin that comes with the PreSonus Fire Studio project. I will be back with more on the Master Verb LE and a handful of other things that come along with this piece of hardware. I'm Bill Holland, and this has been GearWire.com.